Hello, and welcome back to more Graveyard Keeper. Uh, I actually streamed this about a year ago, I assume most of you who are watching already know that. Um, and I put in a lot of time. Uh, it's about 260 days and 45 hours, and as you can tell, the game's pretty long, and the game has a lot of tedium of crafting and gardening and making money in between some of the juicier story bits, which, while it can be a lot of fun to play, isn't as fun to watch. So I thought I would get back to it, um, but as a YouTube series where I can edit out all of the bits that you guys don't want to see and keep in all of the bits that you do want to see, and I think this will be a good way to do it, but I don't want to start over, and I know it's been a while since we've checked in on our keeper here. So without further ado, this is my recap of my story thus far. So taking it back to the very beginning for a moment, uh, this story actually begins with our untimely death. It looks like we get hit by a bus, we were buying something for a nondescript loved one, I'm guessing a wife, based on how much we want to get back, and we meet with a figure that I can only assume is Death, who tells us that our new home is going to be a graveyard, and we're going to be the new graveyard keeper in a place simply called The Village. Uh, we, of course, want to get back home, and he implies that in order to get back home, we have to be a good graveyard keeper. The only tip he really gives us is to dig up a man named Jerry, and that Jerry will have all the answers for us. So, of of course, we do just that. We dig up this body, which ends up being more of just a bouncing, talking skull named Jerry, and Jerry has amnesia. So while he doesn't really have all of the answers for us, like promised, he does point us in a few helpful directions. All in all, it doesn't take very long before we start meeting a lot of the members of the village that we're now a part of. And, of course, they immediately start asking us for favors, and because this is a game, we immediately start doing them. Our ultimate goal is to get home. And while we quickly learn to stop telling people that that is our ultimate goal and that we're from an alternate modern universe, we do start getting little nuggets of how to get home. Jerry tells us that there's some sort of a portal on Witch Hill, which is mostly governed by the Inquisitor, which we'll learn more about in a moment. Uh, and that there's a portal that needs to be opened there. This leads us to the astrologer, who we, of course, bring some books, and he then tells us that we need to craft a spirit laser that he doesn't know much about, just that it needs to be done on the pedestal, on with chill, out of an emitter and a barrel, and that the emitter has three key components, which, of course, will be brought up a lot. Mirror of Pride, the Eternal Burning Coal, and a Salty Fork. The bishop has the mirror, so we're going to have to gain his trust. He wants us to build a giant cathedral and mentions doing a ritual that will make him the savior of the town by bringing water back to the Vimir River. He references the Great Blast, which, by the way, has been referenced before, and I'm sure we're going to learn more about that as time comes. The Inquisitor has the coal and a knack for burning witches. His morals seem questionable, and... I'm not so sure he's sure that these are witches before he burns them. He even goes as far as trying to make the burnings more entertaining by making us open a food stand, which is, I guess, just on us as it is on him, but we don't want to be on his bad side, and nonetheless, whether we like it or not, we're going to have to gain his trust if we want the coal for our portal way home. So we keep him on our good side, and we help him out, and he burns He also mentions the Great Blast, and of course he blames it on the witches, but again, we don't know very much about it other than the, something that happened in the past before us. Lastly, the merchant has the Salty Fork. We actually end up going into business with him by creating goods and giving it to him so that he can sell it to people in the town. Uh, which, of course, is a good money-make opportunity for us and for him, and again, we're going to have to gain his trust if we're going to want that salty fork. 
that's about the gist of the main storyline of us trying to create a spirit laser to make a portal that will theoretically send us home. There are, of course, some side plots going on. We learn that the astrologer's daughter is Miss Charm, who sings in the saloon occasionally, but won't talk to us until we prove ourselves worthy. So we're going to try and help him with that. There's some stuff going on with Snake, who I haven't mentioned before, who's a rogue who helps us get some things and, of course, gets us into the dungeon and uh, trying to summon someone or something. So, of course, we're helping him with that because, you know, he's helped us a lot. We were making zombies and we learned that we're immortal and we can't go into the town. Lots of little things going on here, but I believe that's where I'm going to end this recap. Uh, I'm sure that I will be catching you all up as I play and as I relearn how to do some things myself. My main goal right now is to make a lot of money so that I can buy the aristocratic papers. And of course, I'm going to try and optimize my farm and my garden and my graveyard. And uh, I may fast forward through all of that. I may not, but I do plan on recording all of it so that you guys don't miss out on anything. Uh, I appreciate you guys checking this out. And if you like the series, let me know. And if you don't like it, keep it to yourself. <laughs> as always, as I say in my streams, I appreciate you all being here. And I hope to see you guys again next time.